Hello sword friends, I'm going to tell you about this prismic red Aikuchi style wakizashi that I recently finished up and it was an unexpected fun project that I am very happy with how it came out. It's very simple but very cool, elegant, all sorts of happy thoughts. Okay, here we go. Let's go over some measurements here. Let's start out, we have a handle that's seven and a quarter inches long and a blade of about 19 inches long, not including the habaki. The habaki is the blade collar that adds about another inch. You can also see from the weight that it is not light. It is one pound, six ounces, which is pretty hefty for a wakizashi. The saya is done in a red brick Ishime lacquer. It's a smooth kind of textured lacquer. Basically, it's a mix of a red base coat and a black top coat, which makes it look like red brick. Gives it a nice texture, easy to grip onto, doesn't show fingerprints easily. You can also see that there are horn parts for the fuchi, kashira, koijiri, koiguchi, and kurigata. All the little black bits that you see on there are made of buffalo horn. The segeo that's tied on is excess Loman Tsunami Ito. It feels like suede, but adds a little bit of decoration. The Saya has an enlarged Koiguchi, gives it that bulgy section in the middle to keep your hands from jumping up onto the blade, but also serves that you can see the Habaki fits very well. It lines in very well and it holds the sword very, very tight. It won't fall out if you're bending over. Now this might loosen up over time right now. It's very tight, a little hard to draw, but that's probably also because it's very humid and hot today in Minnesota. A little bit about the Suka. It's basically a simple red Ishime painted to match the Saya. It, the texture actually grips your hand pretty well, but over time the paint might wear, and that's something that you should keep in mind. Now you might ask what that unsightly bulge is on the Suka, and effectively this is a Aikuchi style mount. In a sense, that bulge is made to accentuate the Emperor Node and leave space to tie a knot should you ever want to use this Suka core to tie Ito on, or if it ever gets wrapped in Same, then the general shape of the ska is there. The Suba has a very simple design. It's a simple copper washer without any frills or adornments on it. It serves as an elegant touch to the sword, but also serves as a stopgap to keep your fingers running up. Both the Habaki and the Suba are matched in a Rokusho patina. The Habaki was made by Prismic, the Suba made by the person that mounted the sword together for me, and you can see that they both have kind of a cat scratch type finish to them. Very simple without a lot of frills, but they fit the mount and the general simplicity that I was going for with this project. Okay, onto the blade. As you can see, this is really where Prismic's talents are highlighted. The Hamon is absolutely gorgeous, but let's just talk about the shape of the blade. Prismic has a tendency to make these kind of hearty, beefy blades, and this one is certainly not an exception. It feels very stout and hearty in the hand without being uncontrollable. It's big at one pound, six ounces without the sign. That's the weight in your hand. But because of its size, it still feels mobile and easy. But I would imagine that it is quite a chopper. It has a relatively shallow sori and a big okasaki on it that makes it look pretty. I'd also like to compliment Prismic on the lines here. As you can see, they're nice, smooth, even planes. He's getting much better at polishing swords. This polish was done by him. It does have a few scuffs and scrapes in the polish that came from shipping, but the lines are really hard to nail down and these look very good. The last part I'd like to highlight is the Hamon, and that's because it doesn't really show up in any of the other photos or video that I've done, so I brought it in some natural light here so you can just make out some of the detail and coolness in this Hamon. You can also see that there's a little bit of Hamon or tempered along the spine of the blade to add a little bit of durability or rigidity there. Hell if I know why it's there, but it is tempered intentionally along the spine. You can also see that there's just a lot of detail in the Hamon, you could look at this thing for days and it has a lot of character to show. I really compliment Prismic on his ability to do these things. It, it is really cool. Okie dokie sword friends. So what I'm going to do now is just tell you a little story about the sword. So this last section of the video, I'm going to tell you about the project, kind of how it came to be, why it popped up spur of the moment and you didn't see any other videos about it, you know, what I'm going to do with it. And if none of that kind of stuff really interests you and you were only here for watching the sword pornography cool picture part, then feel free and tune out now because this part is just going to be me, blah, 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 chatty, chatty, chatting. So here's what I got for you. Uh, the sword came to me from Prismic. I bought it from him directly off of Sword Form International. He had it advertised there for, I think, around six or $800, though I can't really remember off the top of my head. 
But uh, the sword was six or eight hundred dollars in Shirasaya with Habaki in polish, and Prismic is a pretty underrated smith in my opinion. I mean, uh, six or eight hundred dollar Wakazashi for six or you know for for that much money to get it in polish as a custom sword with Shirasaya and Habaki is 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 pretty good. That's a pretty good value in my opinion. Um, also, I just think he's underrated. I bought katanas from Prismic and had them professionally polished. The Hamones just sing. Uh, I've also had Tantos and Wakazashis and a whole bunch of other products from him. He has a pretty unique and identifiable style, which is good, something that I, I think anyone wants in a, in a custom smith. Uh, but his blades generally are on the thicker, stouter, heavier side. Not necessarily in a bad way, that's just his style. I mean, if you look at him, he's a pretty muscular big dude, so it, it's no surprise that his blades are kind of like muscular big dudes. Um, this one has that same kind of theme to it. It's a stout, heavy chopper, but at the same time, because it's only 19 inches of blade, it's a lot more manageable and feels reasonably nimble for its, its size and stature as a blade. Now, uh, that's, that's where I got it. I think Prismic does a great job. I'm very happy with this sword, very happy with how it came out. The reason that you did not see any previous videos like I normally do when I do a project, like here's the blade I got, here's what I'm going to do with it, and kind of, kind of a vlog in that way, is because I made some bad decisions, frankly. Um, I sent a sword off to be mounted. It was the uh, Rick Bear Josiah Boomershine collaboration katana, and I sent it off with some fittings to be mounted, and the fittings I sent were too small. It needs a lot bigger fittings than I sent, and I should have known better, and I needed, I needed something to fill the void while I have fittings made. In fact, I probably need a few swords to fill the void while the fittings are being made. This one is what kind of came to mind, and I sent this one off and just I didn't really have any fittings or any ideas for it, and so I sent it and I kind of gave two directions. One was uh, make it cool looking, and the other is make it cost effective. Now, I didn't buy any Fuchikashira or anything like that, so the decision to do something Akutachi where, or Akuchi where, uh, or even a little, maybe this is a little Hamandachi style as well, where I'm just using horn pieces uh, was, was kind of in the mix there, because one, it keeps cost down, two, I didn't have any, and, uh, and so that's how the general shape was decided. Now, in terms of the color, I didn't really pick it. I just said, make it cool looking, and this is what I got. Cool looking and cost effective. This red brick thing, I think, looks really cool. In fact, it matches the color of my bedroom, so if I can't sell it, it may end up as a decoration there. Now, that's, that's anyway why you didn't see any videos. Is this was kind of a spur of the moment decision to send this one off and have it done, and I wasn't really sure what it was gonna look like, so I didn't really have much to say. Now that I've seen it and it's done, I hope you appreciate and think it's cool as well. Uh, I am very, very pleased with it. And I think it kind of, it's an interesting piece in that it appeals. I could totally see it in the martial artist Obi as they're doing practice or, or whatever. Uh, I could see it as a cutting blade, though admittedly, I would be concerned about the paint wearing. I have no experience with just a painted ska. I have no idea how well to hold up. I mean, it's the same paint that's on the saya, and I know that you manipulate the saya when you're doing kata or yaido, so perhaps, well, those don't usually wear away very quickly, so maybe it would hold up, but I have to think that the general movement and pressure from doing cuts with it would, would probably uh, cause the, the ska or the, the lacquer to wear in a way that's more substantial than you would normally see on a side, but I admittedly don't know. That said, the general shape of the ska will permit it to be rewrapped or redone, add same to it, uh, put Ido on it, uh, reuse it or repurpose it. So it could totally, this might not be its final form. It could be done a different way, but either way, I mean, it's it's got a very tight fitting ska. It's totally functional. It's functional in the sense that I could almost see it, you know, just being used as a decoration, uh, or it might end up on a camper's backpack or something. I mean, it's a pretty unique and different looking little piece. So uh, I think it might appeal to a lot of different people, but I have, I mean, really, every time I think I know something about swords and what the industry or people want, I'm proven that I really don't know my ass from a hole in the ground and it's completely random and I really have no idea what's happening. So anyway, uh, let me know what you think. Throw it in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and think it's cool. I'm very, very pleased with it. Um, and so I, I, yeah, shit, that's really all I have to say. I'm really happy. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you as always for watching and cheers.